How you doing, Miss Tamika? Hello, 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 hello. Good evening. I am well. How are you? Doing good. good. I missed your last session, but I'm here tonight. Awesome. I'm glad you could make it. Totally awesome. So I'm just doing my checks and make sure that um I am where I say I am. <laughs> I don't think I got too many browsers open. Okay, we are there. Yes, we are there. Okay, cool. Now let me get back to that. Move this over here. Okay, there we go. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. We'll get started in just a minute. That up so I can see it. Okay, great. Hi, Dion. Hi, everybody on YouTube. Evening. Facebook. How are you? Good evening. All is well. Good. Good, good, good. Oh, gosh. Okay, so you know me, I'm not one to wait <laughs> if I say seven. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> People will come in and then they can watch the replay. Yeah. All right, so um, tonight's class is... Uh, on the topic, how to grow and retain lymph for high porosity hair. And I know that's a subject that, um, you know, a lot of people don't really talk about because most people are either like normal porosity or low porosity, but I'm going to touch on high porosity hair because it might be some people out there who very well need to hear this information. Okay, so. Yeah. All righty. So if everybody can hear me and everybody can see me, we'll go ahead and get started. Oh, my goodness. All right. Okay, so I want to say hello to everybody. And I want to introduce myself. My name is Tamika, and I am your personal hair coach and online hair care teacher. And it's my mission to help everyone that wants to grow their hair long, strong, and healthy, uh, to grow their hair to their, like, the longest lengths they could ever grow their hair. So if you have always had short hair and you want to grow your hair longer, by all means join these classes because I give you lots of valuable information that will help you get your hair healthy and retaining length. Okay, so if you don't know my background, I'm a former salon owner. I was in a salon 15 years and I help women uh, grow their hair uh, through healthy hair makeovers. So we, I revitalize hair and help them grow their hair from short to long. All right. So um, if you want to learn more about me, you can check out my website. You can also check out my other YouTube channels, my other live videos that I have. Um, my website, yourpersonalhaircoach.com. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook um, to be notified of any of the happenings. Uh, also, if you have not already signed up to be notified of the class, this is a weekly class. And I do the class every Tuesday. So if you haven't already signed up, to be notified about the class, I'm putting my link tree there. My link tree has all the goodies, all the links and everything um, for you guys to go check it out. And I also have other offerings and classes and things like that there. And I also do one-on-one -on -one consultations in case any, anybody is interested in doing one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, I can help you get your hair uh, back on track and help you in your long hair, your um, healthy hair growing journey. All righty. Okay, let me exit out of that because that's getting my way. All right. Oh, one thing I want to say too is, um, and I'll probably say it again at the end of the class. Oh, yeah, I'll say it again at the end of the class. We will not be having class on next Tuesday. I'm canceling class because I'm having a procedure done and I don't want to, I don't know <laughs> what mindset or state of mind or being I'm going to be in. So I just don't want to put myself through having to do a class. And so I'm canceling the class so I can just rest and recuperate from my procedure. All righty. But all is well, all is well, it's just routine stuff. All right, so um, I'll send out reminder emails the day before the class and 30 minutes before the class. And if anything comes up, I'll also send you an email. Like I'm gonna send out an email saying that the class is canceled and that we'll have class next week. So, all right. So please go ahead and hold your questions until the end. We will have a short Q&A after 
the class. All right. So um, let's just go ahead and get started. Mm -hmm. And guys, I'm really enjoying these classes with you guys. I've, I've been getting some really good feedback from a lot of you. And it just really excites me, you know, that everybody is, is doing better with their hair care. And <laughs> it makes me feel really good. It makes me feel like I'm serving in my purpose, which I know I am because I feel great every time I serve you guys. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, it's best to have hair cuticles, cuticles that are closed and smooth. <laughs> That's ideal. Um, this way, the hair is healthier. It retains more moisture and is more manageable. But that is not always the case with all hair due to many reasons. Okay, some hair is indeed high porosity. Um, that means that the cuticles are lifted and the hair is very porous. So high porosity hair tends to look dry. It is usually frizzy. It tangles easily and is prone to damage and breakage. And it also is all also, air dries very quickly and products absorb quickly into the strands. Okay. Also, high porosity hair um, struggles to retain moisture. And while it absorbs moisture easily, it also loses moisture easily. So because of the moisture loss, um, your hair will experience <laughs> a dryness, which can also lead to damage and breakage and no length retention. So, you know, guys here, we're all about length retention. So that's another reason why I'm doing this class is so we can focus on length retention, getting you guys the lengths that you want to get regardless of what your hair issues are. Okay. Um, high porosity hair tends to feel like it needs moisture all the time. And it's also prone to tangles. Again, I said that before, because the cuticles are lifted and rub against each other. So it's just rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, which causes tangles. It's kind of like um, your weave hair. If your weave hair um, cuticles are on the line, then you want to get bunched up tangles. It's the same thing with um, high porosity hair. So if you do a hair porosity test with a glass of room temperature water, um, you can start with clean hair. If you put the hair into the water, the, the high porosity hair is going to sink to the bottom of the glass. Okay, that's one test. Another way to test for high porosity is to use your fingers and slide in a downward motion. In a downward motion on a strand of hair, if it feels rough, then more than likely you have high porosity hair. So those are just a couple of tests. Now, all right. Now, if you guys have microscopes out there, you can go look under a microscope and high porosity hair, the cuticles are gonna be lifted. They're gonna be open and lifted. Yeah, kind of like um, scales on a fish. Like if you go backwards on the scales, the scales lift up, high porosity hair, that's the same way. So what causes high porosity hair? So chemical, ser chemical services such as relaxers, um, color treatments, rough combing, and handling your hair um, can also cause your hair to be high porosity. And loss of protein um, can cause your hair to be high, high porosity. Um, too much heat from blow dryers and flat irons can also cause your hair to be high porosity. So it's not always like um, natural elements. Sometimes it's things that you actually do to your hair that cause your hair to be high porosity. So if you have high porosity hair, there are ways to keep your hair moisturized. Okay. So um, one thing you can do is hot oil treatments. So using hot oil treatments in the beginning of your hair care routine will seal your cuticles and help them to retain moisture. And I remember I used to be like, no, you don't need, you know, um, hot oil treatments. You don't need them. But I started doing them and I actually love them. And my hair is not high porosity. I have um, normal porosity hair. And I have some low porosity hair in some parts of my head, like my nape. But Auto treatments are key for high porosity hair. So incorporate that into your regimen. They're wonderful. And hot and um, auto treatments are done pre-shampoo. So you don't do it after you shampoo you do it before because you don't want all the oils in your hair because they need to be washed out. Okay. Um, using the hot oil treatments, of course, I said they will seal your cuticles and help you to retain moisture. So just remember that. Also use creamy thick conditioners on your hair that contain oils and butters. Um, high porosity hair does well with products that are thicker. Just remember that thicker, thicker, thicker. Okay. Be sure to always seal in moisture by using oils that are heavier and provide a coating on the hair shaft. Oils like castor oil, shea butter, hair grease. I said it. Hair grease. You know, the old crown royale or the blue, what is it, the blue magic and all that hair grease. I've even seen some people talk about a uh, petroleum jelly. All that type of stuff. I know a lot of people are tab. It's, it's a taboo subject, 
but a lot of people out there and they're saying that hair grease works. So hair grease and any thick type of oil um, will, that will coat the hair strands, okay? So um, be sure to use shampoo. I mean, be sure to uh, shampoo your hair with the coolest water possible. Uh, cool rinses after conditioning will help coax the hair cuticles closed and help your hair retain more moisture. Whenever you use warm water to shampoo your hair, it helps kind of coax the cuticles open and you don't want to coax the cuticles even more open than what they are. And so warm water is going to cause more <laughs> your cuticles to open more and then cause your hair to be more tangly during the shampoo process. And you want to prevent that. Okay. Um, you can use a, a rinse with apple cider vinegar and aloe vera juice to close the cuticles as well. If, if you want to take like another step, you know, after you do your conditioning. Um, you may have to shampoo and decondition your hair more frequently to help your hair get more needed moisture. Okay. All right. You'll also need more protein treatments more often protein treatments because high porosity hair tends to lack protein and high porosity hair tends to love protein because it lacks protein. So you'll need more often hair um, uh, protein treatments. Say for instance, um, if you're natural and you, you do a protein treatment, like I would say every three months for somebody who is high porosity, they may have to do it once a month or once every three weeks, or something like that. But you really have to pay attention to your hair. You have to pay attention to your hair's needs and See how your hair responds to protein treatments before you just decide the frequency at which you know that your hair needs them. Because um, learning your hair is just a lot of trying things and trial and error. That, well, once you finally get your routine down, stick with it because that's what your hair likes. You don't have to keep switching up routine all the time. And you have to keep, once you find products that you like, you don't have to keep um, like buying products over and over and over again and jumping on these different bandwagons and being a product junkie and stuff because your hair likes what it likes. Yeah, and usually when a product stops working, that means your hair needs to be clarified, not because the product stopped working. All right. Um, you can try co-washes um, on your hair instead of shampooing. Um, if you're doing your routine more frequently, like some people are, are shampooing their hair once a week or some people are shampooing their hair more than once a week. So if you're shampooing your hair more than once a week, you know, you might want to skip the shampoo in between and do co-washes and then just shampoo your hair sometimes, okay? So this allows as much moisture to be absorbed into your hair as possible on shampoo day. Um, in the past, I did co-washes and my hair absolutely loved them. Yeah, your hair just really becomes highly moisturized and breakage is down to a minimum uh, when you do co-washes on a regular basis. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, you can add honey to your conditioner. It adds moisture and smooths the hair cuticles. Honey is amazing, okay? You have to moisturize your hair more often even daily. And some may find it beneficial to just supply oils instead of products that contain water, but it depends on your hair. And that's the thing, like what works for one person who has high porosity hair may not work for another person who has high porosity hair. So you have to gauge and see what your hair likes. You have to really pay attention to it. So after you use something, how's your hair responding? Is, does it feel moisturized? Is it soft? Is it, is it, um, does it feel healthy or is it feeling limp or dry or breaking? So just be mindful of that, you know, um, if a product seems like it's not doing too well with your hair, either one or two things will happen. Either you didn't clarify so the product can work properly or your hair hates it. So just be mindful. Um, yeah. So refrain from overuse of heat from blow drying and flat ironing. There's a lot of people, they want to do that a lot of time. And remember before in the beginning, I said that blow drying and flat ironing, if you do it too much, can cause your hair to be high porosity. So just try to stay away from heat as much as you can. Understand that you have to use heat sometimes, especially depending on how you style your hair, but don't overuse heat because some people are still to this day touching up their hair every day and that's not a good thing. Okay. Use the LCO method to moisturize and seal your hair and put it up in a bun for a few days at a time. So this will kind of keep your hair away from the elements and keep your hair moisturized. So protective styles will keep your hair moisturized longer, regardless of what porosity you are, but what porosity your hair is. But if you're high porosity hair, then it's very beneficial, like super beneficial to you as well. So one thing I want to say is if you have been doing your deep conditioning with heat, try it without heat, okay? Because... Um, the open nature of your cuticle allows the conditioner to absorb easily, so you won't necessarily need heat to um, have the conditioner absorb into strands. So you can put the conditioner on your hair as usual, and then 
put a plastic cap on and quite possibly just go do something and then, you know, rent the conditioner out instead of um, using the heat and, and see if um, your hair responds better to um, the no heat deep conditioning as compared to heat deep conditioning. Now, you have to gauge it because your hair might like it, you know, but try it and see how your hair responds first before you decide, you know, one or the other. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a few um, conditioners that work well on low porosity hair. And I um, went on a few blogs and, and listened to a few of the people out there who have low, um, not low porosity hair, high porosity hair. See, I'm stuck on low porosity and we're talking about high porosity hair. But um, a few conditioners that work well with high porosity hair. Um, not one of a few blogs, people who had like high porosity hair and these products were like their holy grails. And so I want to give you these. So the cream of nature, pure honey hair food is one of them. Um, I guess I'll put it in the chat too. And Shea Moisture Manuka Honey Intensive Hydration Conditioner. Herbal Essence Hello Hydration Conditioner. That was a surprise to me because that's on like the lower end of the spectrum, but they say it works. And then the Shea Moisture Low Porosity Hydrating Conditioner. And I'll put it in the chat so you guys can see that. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that didn't turn out too well. It, here we go. Yeah, that, that's the conditioners. Where am I? Yeah. All right. So um, high porosity hair, I would say needs to be trimmed a little bit more often because it's more prone to damage and breakage. So trim high porosity hair about every 10 weeks. You, you may be able to get 12. Because normally I, I say 12 to, to 16 weeks or more, depending on how well you take care of your hair. But I would say with high, high porosity hair every 10 to 12 -ish weeks. Okay. So, um, yeah, and that'll just help keep your ends healthy and keep everything kosher. That way you can retain uh, your length. Try not to manipulate your hair too much. This can cause further damage. If you can get into protective styles for um, a good amount of time, Get into protective styles. It's going to help your hair retain length. It's going to help your high porosity hair retain as much moisture as possible because um, generally you're going to find your hair feels like it's thirsty all the time. You're going to have to moisturize regularly. And I've heard of people moisturizing a couple of times a day, which I think is a lot. So if you get your hair to protect protective styles, then uh, like the moisture will hold better because it's not being absorbed through the elements as quickly as compared to having your hair out and about in styles. All right. All right, let me see if there's anything else. I think that's all I have for high porosity. It's pretty like straightforward, but of course, if you guys have any questions, you can ask me. But I want to say, uh, remember, check out my link tree for more informational links and sign up, be notified of the next class if you haven't done it already. Let's go ahead and get into the Q&A. And also, I want to say it again, we will not be having class next week because I'm having a procedure done and I'm just canceling class. All right, so we can go on ahead and get into questions if any of you guys have any questions. I'll give you a chance to, to come on if you want to come on camera or, okay, Mari, yes. Hello. Hey, Ms. Tamika. Hey. I first want to say, um, I hope your procedure goes well. Thank you. Yes. So with the hot oil treatments, are there any particular oils that you recommend or you like? And then also how long do you uh, do the process? Okay, so for the hot oil treatments, I love to use olive oil. That, that's my favorite, favorite, favorite one. Um, and what you do is you heat the oil up until it's warm. You don't want it hot. Heat it up until it's warm. And you can also just apply the, the oil directly to your hair and put a plastic cap on and sit under the dryer at, and do it that way. But if you don't have a, a hooded dryer, you can heat the oil up and then put it in your strands and then wrap it in a towel and just let it sit. Um, I will say about 15 minutes at best for the hot oil treatment. And um then you proceed with your regular shampoo and conditioning process. Okay. But thank right, you thank so much. You, Mr. Mika. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's see if anybody has any questions. Let's see. And hello, YouTube. Thank you, Kayetta. I hope I pronounced that right. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, Blue Magic. So good oil treatments, you just make your own. I use olive oil. Yeah, but you can use pretty much any oil that you wanna use um, for the hot oil treatments. It doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. 
Thank you, Chastity. I appreciate that. Oh, gosh. All right, well, man, y'all making this class short. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? I'll give you just a second. Oh, that's good. Thirsty. Hi, Tamika. <laughs> you spell your name just like me. That's awesome. All right. I guess I explained everything well enough, so no questions there. Or maybe there just aren't any high porosity people on here. <laughs> One of the two, but they'll watch the replay. Yeah. All right, well, does anybody want to come on and ask questions? I want to give people time to get it in. That way I won't end it before the questions are answered. If not, I'll give you guys about 60 seconds. Can someone be born with high porosity or only come to damage? Yeah, you can be, but more than likely it comes from damage, yeah. 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 Okay, well, yeah. All right, so there are not any more questions. I guess I'll go on ahead and bid you guys good night. Oh, wait, here's a question. How do you safely blow dry high porosity hair? Be sure to use a good heat protectant, something that's um, like thicker silicone base would work really well um, for that. And you might want to use a leave-in conditioner prior to the um, putting on the heat protectant. Yeah, and that'll help protect your hair. And don't, don't blow dry your hair on like super high, Try medium to medium high, you know, that area and see um, how it goes. But yeah, if you're doing it to still crush your hair, then you're going to have to go a little bit higher on the heat. But if you're doing it just to like stretch it or something like that, you could probably go on lower heat. Yeah. Ooh, still dealing with shedding from pregnancy after a year. Any tips? Oh, dear. Shedding for that long. I honestly don't know. The only thing I can think is just, well, maybe if you're still nursing, well, I'm showing, I'm showing my, my age there when I'm saying nursing, but y'all know what I mean. Um, uh, maybe more nutrients, more vitamins, maybe taking some supplements, some iron supplements, or even garlic supplements or something might help. Scalp massages might help. Um, your hair and just getting it up and away from the elements uh, could quite possibly help, but just making sure that, that um, you're getting the right nutrition, I think, might be uh, good for you. I'm natural now for seven years. That's awesome. Yeah. I've been natural since 2010, so I'm going on 12 years. So seven years is good. It's good. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Yep. All right. 60 more seconds. <laughs> yeah, being natural is tough. <laughs> Because me and these single strand knots, we'd be fighting all the time. Oh my gosh, I just <clears throat> single strand knots are not my friend. Oof, terrible. All right. Okay. I'm looking here, looking there. All right. Well, if nobody else has any questions, I will bid you all good night and let me see, when is the next date for the class? So I can tell you guys. Um, the 25th. So the next class will be on the 25th of October. Okay, ooh, another question. When I use Rev Air, oil leaks from it. How do I prevent? I couldn't tell you, you have to call Rev Air because I've never had that happen before. I, you have to call the customer service. I've never had that happen. I've had three Rev Airs. So, um, the only thing I can think is maybe like the wands weren't put on properly. Where where is the oil leaking from? Maybe the wand is not put on properly, or the um the the um uh, hose is not put on properly to the base. But it, I don't think it should be leaking oil. No. Yeah, call the company. They should be able to help you. Wow. Oh, oil from your hair. 
Oh, <laughs> okay. I've never had that happen before. So, are you, so what? What are you doing? Are you applying oil to your hair before you rev air? Because that's not that's not recommended to do that. Because your hair should be pretty. Um, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say um, necessarily product free, but I would say oil free. Yeah. Is steaming helpful or heat deep conditioning? Yes, steaming is great for hair. So uh, steam treatments are great. Definitely uh, helps infuse the moisture and nutrients into your hair strands. Yes. <laughs> yes, when you deep condition, steaming is great. But if you don't have a steamer, you can always do the good old hooded dryer. But, and, and people want to know where to get steamers from. You can just go on. Amazon, they got like a whole bunch of different ones for like under a hundred bucks and they actually work. And if you're not using it on a regular, regular basis, it'll probably last you for years on end. Yeah. Okay. All right. Every time I say, uh, does anybody have any more questions? They do. So I'm going to wait 60 more seconds. See if you guys type anything in. How often should we be clarifying? Me personally, I clarify every shampoo. But some people don't want to do it that often. So I would say at least once a month, at least once a month. Yeah, especially if you, if you have a lot of product buildup on your hair or if you feel like your hair is not responding to the products, then it's time to clarify. And me, I'm a, I'm a uh, use the clarifying shampoo girl. I don't like the baking soda and the clays and apple cider vinegar and all that stuff. I want some shampoo to clarify my hair because I feel like it does a job better. All right. Which brand do you recommend? Uh, I like the Biolage. Da, 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 da. I cannot think of the name of it because it's not right in front of me, but I've been using it for years. I have several that I like. Um, one of them is actually discontinued. Biolage Clarifying Shampoo. I'm looking it up. Um, it's called Biolage Clean Reset. Bio Lodge, I'm typing in clean reset. And I've been using that for about five, six years. And I absolutely, I didn't spell that right. Bio Lodge. And one I used to love was by Lucent, but they discontinued their line. And also the Paul Mitchell Sugar Cleanse, that was my favorite favorite. They discontinued that too, which I don't know why, because it's amazing. I don't understand why companies discontinue great products. Okay. So just because a straight hair natural, I just became a straight hair natural and I get regular trims, will they help my hair grow faster? Trims do not help your hair grow faster. What trims do is keep your ends healthy so you can retain length, okay? So nothing really helps your hair grow faster. Yeah, not really. And you can get growth spurts from things, but to overall get your hair grow faster, because if that was the case, people would be doing those things and everybody would have hair to the butt, okay? All right. Um, how do you feel about scalp scrubs? Wonderful for clarifying the scalp and just sloughing off like any impurities, any dandruff, any dirt and all this type of stuff. They're great. And it's a great way to get a massage in too. So don't do it too often. But yeah, I, I, I would say you could do it probably every couple of weeks if you need to. But just be mindful um, of how your um, scalp responds to it. But they're great. So what is the name of a good protein treatment? So let me put this over here too, just in case you guys, because I'm, I have two screens, sorry y'all. And sometimes I forget something. Oh, sometimes I forget to put one thing on one screen, but the, um, I hope this is not doing what I want to do. I want to type in the BioLodge. BioLodge. Clean Reset, Clarifying Shampoo. Okay, so what is the name of a good protein treatment? I'm gonna tell y'all my favorite is the Joyco Hey pack I'm gonna type it in. Simply because it's a mild protein, you can use it more often without having to follow up with a moisturizing treatment. So it's cost-effective and it works really well and it smells like bananas and cinnamon, which I love. Yeah. Oh, and the Joyco K-Pack, if you guys do decide that you want to buy it, one thing about it is that it's very kind of 
I won't say slimy, but it's a thinner um, conditioner. So it comes, it pours out instead of being like thick and creamy. Cause I know a lot of you guys are probably used to like a lot of deep treatment, a lot of deep treatments being thick and creamy, but Joy Co K pack is not. It pours out almost like shampoo. So let me put that over here. The Joy Co K pack. It's my favorite. Yeah. All right. I use Oris hair mayonnaise. Is that a bad protein treatment? No, I wouldn't say it's bad. If your hair likes it, then your hair likes it. Because I'm I'm not the type of person to be like, oh, that's a horrible product. If it's working well for your hair, it's working well for your hair. Because you don't need to go and like buy all these new products and stuff. If the products that you um, that you have are working well, then they're working well. A lot of times it's not necessarily the product, it's the process. A lot of times the product is working fine, but it's what we do to our hair or how we apply the products that cause us to not get the benefits from them. So just be mindful of that. When is the best time to apply light oil like rosemary oil to the hair? Will it lock out any additional moisture? Um, I like to apply my stuff in the morning time. And it if it's a light oil, it'll absorb. And you're going to have to reapply it later on. So it won't block out any moisture. No, you're just going to need more later on. That's why we moisturize our hair sometimes three, four times a week daily if needed. But um, the rosemary oil, that sounds like an essential oil. So I would say that you'll probably also have to... Um, Put that in a carrier oil so it won't do anything harmful to your hair. A carrier oil, like um, uh, you could put it in coconut oil, you could put it in olive oil. Those are carrier oils. Put it in that. All right. And okay. So I'm glad I waited for additional questions because y'all had some. Yay! All right. Okay, that one's good. I, I like the Mio Organics. Okay, that's good. But they have fantastic products. Yes, awesome. Yeah, just stick with that. Awesome. Okay, guys. So if you don't have any more questions, I'm going to go on ahead and end this call and I will see you guys on the 25th for our next class. Thank you so much, Mar. you're so sweet. All right, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that, Young. <laughs> Pink is actually my favorite color, <laughs> but can't you tell? <laughs> All right, guys, love you guys so much. Thank you for letting me serve you in this capacity. And 